What's up guys, this is Jimmy Chang and I'm back. This is the last of four videos from a recent trip to Seattle. For this video, I'm going to explore downtown Seattle on my one wheel pint. If you're new to my channel, then you should know that I love riding electric rideable devices. From my one wheels, to my electric unicycles, to my electric skateboards. I hope you enjoy this video and consider subscribing for more content related to e-rideables. Our first stop on this downtown tour starts just outside downtown at the iconic Space Needle and the surrounding area called the Seattle Center, which is a 74-acre park focused on arts, education, tourism, and entertainment. The Space Needle is what makes the skyline of Seattle so recognizable, but before we get there, I'm floating around the International Fountain, which, like the Space Needle, was built for the 1962 World's Fair. I stop here at this food court to top off my battery really quickly while I have a pastry with my wife. Using an XR charger with the adapter from Landsurf, I can charge my one wheel pint battery in half the time it would take to charge with a stock pint charger. If you have an XR charger, this Landsurf adapter is a no brainer. I love that when I take my XR and my pint out, I only need to carry one charger and one adapter. The only drawback is the length of the adapter. The worry wart in me gets anxious that it might get bumped and cause damage to my board. So I'm super careful with how and where I position my board when charging. The Space Needle was built specifically for the 1962 World's Fair and was recently renovated with a rotating observation deck with a glass floor. At the time of its construction, the Space Needle was the tallest building west of the Mississippi. <laughs> Today it still provides great views of the city, surrounding water, and mountains, and is definitely worth checking out. Other highlights here at Seattle Center are the Museum of Pop Culture, this crazy metallic building, the Chihuly Garden and Glass, and this fun playground where I got to ride around in this maze to test my one-wheel skills, or lack thereof. Slydog called me out in a previous video for passing up on some fun one-wheel features while cruising near the water here at Seattle. As far as one-wheel features go, this is perfect for me. It requires no jumps, bonks, or drops, just nice flat ground and a lot of turning. From the Seattle Center, my wife rented one of those electric bikes and we continued on to our next destination. I've taken my one wheel in the streets of downtown Denver, San Diego, Los Angeles, New York City, and even Maui. The nice thing about busy cities is, because of all the traffic and stoplights, cars are not going too fast. I usually feel pretty safe riding in Seattle, alternating between bike lanes, sidewalks, and street riding. I'm no sly dog, but this old dog can hold his own while riding on city streets. If you missed it, I go over how to ride in city streets in a previous video. Next on a one wheel tour of downtown Seattle is the most popular tourist attraction in Seattle and the 33rd most visited attraction in the world according to Wikipedia. Can you guess where we're going? If you said the original Starbucks, then you're not wrong, because we're going to Pike Place Market, where the first ever Starbucks was built, and now Starbucks locations all over the country serve as charging and rest locations for me and other one-wheelers, where riders can recharge on electricity and caffeine. Just make sure you buy something while you wait and charge so you don't overstay your welcome. Pike Place Market is one of the oldest, continuously operating farmers markets in the US. One bit of interesting history. At the time of World War II, about four-fifths of the farmers at Pike Place Market stalls 
were operated by Americans of Japanese ancestry. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, intense fears of Japanese spies caused some regrettable decisions. President Franklin Roosevelt's executive order led to the removal of all people of Japanese ancestry from the West Coast states and Arizona, and they were forced to move into internment camps, causing them to lose their homes and businesses. It's a sad stain in the history of the United States, the result of fear-mongering which led to the unnecessary suffering of many innocent people. I'm not going to take you through the actual market because it's way too crowded and I just don't feel like carrying my one wheel. So if you want to check out this amazing farmer's market, you'll have to go and check it out yourself. One thing I will show you here at Pike Place Market is found in an alleyway, just under the market. The gum wall is a section of alleyway where all the walls are covered with layers and layers of chewing gum. It's not for those with weak stomachs. The tradition of putting your used gum on the wall started in 1993 and it has stuck around since then. The wall became a tourist attraction in 1999 and when it was cleaned in 2015 for maintenance, over 2,350 pounds of gum was removed and disposed of. Since then, gum has found its way back to this colorfully sticky attraction of Seattle. I must say, it's a little stomach churning to see all of that gum stuck in the walls, and I was a bit worried about falling off my one wheel and getting stuck onto the wall myself. On my way to the next stop of our downtown Seattle tour, I come across a guy on an electric unicycle. We chatted for a bit, and he told me why he loves his electric unicycle in Seattle. Speed, power, range, that glidey feeling, it's addictive, and it's great for the hills of Seattle. I love my electric unicycles. I just have no way to take it on trips like this, but I currently own a Kingsong 16S and a Gotway Nikola, and they are amazing. If you want to learn more about electric unicycles and why most people, once they figure out how to ride them, just absolutely love them, then check out some of my other videos. Now to the next stop, where I'm sure my wife has already made it, but I'm running late because I took a detour while riding and chatting with the electric unicyclist. The next stop on this list is the Amazon Spheres, sometimes referred to as Bezos Balls, after Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO and president of Amazon.com. The Amazon Spheres are part of the Amazon headquarters, and inside there are over 40,000 plants from over 50 different countries. It's not normally open to the public, and we didn't go in on this visit, but we have in a previous visit, and you can check that out in the link above. Just outside Bezos Balls, there are these bean bags for folks to rest on. After a little nap, we went inside an Amazon Go store, which is the world's first automated store. You scan in with your Amazon app. The store uses computer vision and deep learning to track you in the store. And when you're done, you just do as the slogan says on the mugs and on the signs on the walls. You just walk out. No lines. No cashiers, no nothing. Super easy. You feel like you're shoplifting, but Amazon is in the business of making money and putting cashiers out of work. And they are certainly not going to let me walk out of the store 
without charging me for my oatmeal cookie. It all gets charged on my Amazon account and I get sent an email with a receipt soon after leaving. There's something about Seattle that makes it different. From the futuristic Space Needle built almost 60 years ago to the futuristic Amazon Spheres just built a few years ago. There's the quirkiness of the gum wall and the diversity and liveliness of Pike Place Market. Seattle is unique. When we lived here, we loved it. Coming back to visit and exploring the city on a one wheel has given me a new perspective of the city and I wanted to share that with you on this ride. Special thanks to Suprents who provided this rental one wheel pint. Suprents makes having a one wheel for your trip or vacation almost as easy as buying something from that Amazon Go store. Check out Suprents if you're looking to rent a one wheel for your trip or if you want to have a demo one wheel and try before you buy. They have a pretty good program for that too. This one wheel tour of the city is a different type of video from anything I've done in the past. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone you think may like it too. If you have an idea to improve future videos like this, let me know about it in the comments below. I read every comment. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember to wear your safety gear.